How many times did you hit him? Just the once. But he will have a black eye, won't he? Probably a fat lip. A black eye would have been better. Nicola! Actually, I could do without you assaulting my customers. He had it coming. And you need to learn to look after yourself. Just because some bloke sweet talks you doesn't mean to say it's time to run out and buy a wedding dress. You listen to your sister. She's not wrong. I bet there's times when you'd have liked Dad to sort some block out for you. I don't think your husband approves. No, not at all. I think it's a marvellous idea to go around hitting anyone who offends you or your daughters. Think what a lovely village this would be if everyone behaved in the same way. There comes a time when having a quiet word with someone just won't do. Violence is never the best option. You've succumbed in your time. Have you, Ashley? I'm not proud of it. He's not a violent man by any stretch of the imagination. Thank you. Excuse me. Just as well, really. God gave him brains and a big heart, but when it came to muscles, he weren't quite at the front of the queue. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if we'll see any more of Rodney. Enjoy that little scene, did we? Of course. Two Neanderthal men having a punch up. That's your idea of entertainment, isn't Not it? Not subtle. I'll grant you, but yes, it amuses me. Well, it doesn't amuse me. Well, get rid of Fraser then. You know I'm up for it. You hate him, don't you? Oh. Hate's a little strong. Oh, I don't think so. You'd probably like to hit him yourself. No, oh, I'm happy to put him down without using my fist. Well, I'm sure you're charity's hero. Do you know, I once had two blokes fighting over me. Only once. It's not all it's cracked up to be, though. There was a lot of mess and shouting. Then the winner stumbled over covered in blood, expecting some kind of grateful snog. Anyway, I'll see you later. We're in a hurry. This is going to be such a good day, Donna. I can't wait. I'm going into Lee's today to get some ideas for the B&B. A bit of a metropolitan chick, that's what's called cool for. And I'm off to spend the day learning more about pensions at this post office fair. Not too many knick-knacks, though. Things get all fussy, I, I get a bit tense. What do you mean? You know, lacy toilet roll holders, for instance. I can't stand them. It's not going to be like that, I've told you. It's going to be classy, it's going to be themed. What sort of toilet roll holder would suit a medieval bathroom? So, what should I expect today then, Avid? Eh, oh, you'll be fine, you'll sail through it. Are you sure about this medieval business? It could be really naff. Trust your mother, Donna. Sophistication is my watchword. Viv, what? give me details. What's it actually like? Oh, I don't know. So long ago, I can hardly remember. Tell you what, we're meeting the wool pack later. You can tell me how it went. Yeah, OK. I haven't looked forward to a day like this in ages. New beginnings for both of us, eh? Right then. Mm. See you later. On your way out, Chris? Yes. Uh, can I have a word? You're not getting a rise. What? I know when you're about to say something I'm not going to like. You get a wary note in your voice. Yeah, well, um, you might not like this. <sighs> Spit it out. I might be resigning. Oh. How will I cope? Nothing set in stone yet. It's just, uh, Carol's buying the shop. She wants me to be manager. So you're going to be selling stamps and newspapers? There's a step up in the world. Yeah, well, I didn't expect your blessing, but, uh, well, fact is, I'm looking forward to it. You don't sound very convincing. I'll keep you informed, obviously. No, I'll keep you informed. I don't know if I want an employee who's got one eye on a different job. What are you waiting for? I need a lift. Are you busy? Well, I'm halfway through chopping some aubergines, courgettes and peppers. Shall I come back? Well, let's see. Whose company would I prefer? Yours or a few pounds of Mediterranean veg? Yours, I think. <laughs> I just wanted to say thanks for being so nice the other day. You don't have to thank me. It was no great effort. I feel really stupid. I was completely taken in by him. You have to be careful who you trust. There's some real rats out there. How do I tell a rat from a good block? You just look in his eyes. Disregard anything he says. Just look in his eyes. You'll be able to read whether he's genuine or not. Yeah, like that. You're genuine, aren't you? I'll always be faithful to my courgettes, me. <laughs> Never cheated on anyone. 
Your sister asked me the same question once. It's like I told her. I'm the good guy, me. I'm always the loser. We could do with a hand out there. Are you bothering Carlos? I don't know. Am I? See you later. Let's go. What are you doing here? So this is where it all happened, is it? You come see me. How many rooms in there? Why are you thinking of buying? Well, the question is, do we knock it down and start from scratch, or do we convert? You're not serious. Of course I am. Jack hasn't even gone to trial yet, and you come grubbing around looking for a quick profit. Not that quick. You see, I'd have to apply for change of use, and then there'll be all the building work. You see, he's let it go to seed a bit, hasn't he? You've sunk to a new low, haven't you? Get out of here! I don't think so. I've got a legitimate reason for being here. You have absolutely no rights over this property at all, do you? I have. Get lost. Oh, Chris, let's go. <sighs> Reinforcements? Go on, get off our land. <laughs> You're your father's son, aren't you, Robert? I'll tell you the truth. I honestly believe that the sooner this place is sold, the better it'll be for you. Get him out of here. You have no shame, do you? Charming attitude, Cathy. I sometimes wonder whether you're ever going to grow up. Do you want to know the truth? I feel dirty just talking to you. Come on, Robert. I just thank God I don't have anything to do with you anymore. She's after a job. No, she's not. She's just mucking in. I asked her to help. Look at this. It's like a vision. The three most beautiful girls in the world. And you can just walk right back out that door. We've heard what you've been up to. What, defending my daughter's honour? <laughs> you got a problem with that? Some of us have to live in this village and see people like Andrew Fraser and Chris Tate week in and week out. She sounds convincing, doesn't she? But if it had been you, she'd probably gone and whacked him one herself. <laughs> Look, maybe it's time you and Nicola moved on. No offence, pet, but you haven't got a job. You're free and single again. There's nothing to keep you here. Does my sister. And who knows, I might meet someone. Well, surely if uh, Nicky fancies hanging round here a bit longer, the answer is staring us right in the face. Dad. Well, you've got a spare room here, haven't you? And uh, there's bound to be some bar work going on. Now, just a minute. Oh, can I? Oh, go on, I've always wanted to work behind a bar. Experience? I'm a quick learner. Oh, please. Well, we'll try you out, then. Can I help you? I just want a pint. Coming up. <laughs> you see? It's all worked out beautifully. <laughs> Why are you at school? I had a headache. Oh, Robert. What? It's important to try and keep some sense of normality. It's what your dad would expect. Normality? You're joking, aren't you? <sighs> no, I'm not. After the trial, the four of you will need to start rebuilding your lives. It's gonna be hard if Dad's in prison for the rest of us. He won't be. He's coming home next week. So why is he selling the farm? I don't know. I think he wants a fresh start. But I'd understand it. He loves this place. What are you getting at? I think he's selling it because he knows he's not coming home. No, Rob, you're wrong. And he knows he's not coming home because he knows he did it. He killed my mum. Hey, that is not true. It must be. Who else could have done it? I don't pretend to know who did it or how it happened. But I do know your dad, and I can't and won't believe that he would do that. I thought I knew him too. You've got to have faith, Robert. Well, that's better than the last one. That's on me. Well done, love, you're learning. How much is it? 167. Do you know how to work a till? Of course I do. I'll be keeping my eye on you. Why? Don't you trust me? Of course she does. It's all right, Mum. I'll take over from here. Richie needs serving. Uh, pint of lager, please, Dad. I think perhaps you better collect glasses for now. Tonic 
pint water, please. Mm, very restrained. I thought I might keep an eye on my weight. Oh, well done. Well, are you fat? I think perhaps that's a good idea. You know, in my day, I was quite a good rugby player. Were you? I used to play for my university on the wing. I was thinking it might be an idea to rediscover some of that old fitness. Oh, I think that's marvellous. Get fit for fatherhood. I think perhaps you ought to go for a check-up first, though, before you do anything too strenuous. Do you think so? Your rugby days are long gone, I'm afraid, my love. You were going to install my new software yesterday. Yeah, sorry about that. I've had a lot on my mind. I'm going to need most of next week off as well for the trial. I know. I'm prepared to tolerate your standard slipping for now, Richie. But when that trial's over, I'll expect you to put it behind you and focus on your work again. That's easier said than done. It doesn't no matter to you that I'm going through the most difficult time of my life. Not one bit. What matters to me is the job that you're meant to be doing. Every day and every night, I've got the trial on my mind. I can't stop thinking about it. I think about Sarah. I think about what Jack did. I think about how I nearly died, Chris, and maybe... Maybe I could have saved her. Every day and every night. I'm not your therapist. I'm your boss. Let me put this as simply as I can. When the trial is over, it is over. I don't want any more mooning about. I don't want excuses. I want you back on top form. Understood? Yeah, I understand. I just don't know if I'll be able to give you that. That's all. Hello, you. I have just endured the most boring morning of my entire life. Where have you been? I've been to the post office day. It's no good, it's just not for me. I had to leave. A bit dull. You'll never see me behind that post office counter. I just can't get interested in stamps and allowances and what to do if a pension day falls on a bank holiday. It's no good. Emily's going to have to deal with it. She'll need some backup. Well, you can be her backup. Or we can get somebody else in. I can't sit in that little cubicle. I'll get claustrophobic. All right, all right. Look, uh, I've got some good news. I talked to Chris. I told him I'd be moving on. Well, that's it. That's the good news. Oh, yeah, that's great. What's this? Whiskey and Coke. Would you mind getting me my rum and Coke, please? One for my best mate. What about a four poster? That's Elizabethan, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, of course it is. And on my advertising, it'll say, sleep like the Queen of England. Or the King, obviously. You have a good day, Carol? Yeah, how'd it go? Well, I've decided the post office will be Emily's department. I oh, don't blame you. You can lose the will to live behind that counter. Mm -hmm. Now, my skills lie more in fine foods. <laughs> what, more snails? Now, look at this. This is my brainwave, <laughs> this is. A jukebox in the 70s room playing all the hits. <laughs> oh, that's a good idea. Don't sound so surprised. Oh, do you remember Schwaddy Waddy? <laughs> You send a few visitors our way, won't you? As long as you return the favour. Are you sure you can afford all of this, though? <laughs> of course. Remember clever old Bob? He suggested offering 20000 under the asking price? Mm. Well, the banker lend me that to do the place up. Great investment. Mm -hmm. Ooh, it's all worked out nicely. Mm. And after we finish these, we get back home, because we've got financial matters to discuss. You and me are going to have a ball, aren't we? Afternoon. I'm busy, Chris. Just thought I'd look in, see if everything's all right. Very thoughtful, but I haven't got time for social calls. Doesn't look too bad. Have you put some ice on it? You're going to let me get on with my work? Well, I'm surprised you can do any work. With betrayed lovers and outraged fathers popping up every five minutes. Nothing that goes on in my personal life is going to interfere with the running of the stud. It better not. Step out of line again, you'll be looking for a new job. Ordered lager, not bitter. Sorry. Beer's better for you, though. What? I'll get you another. So, how would you get on with that problem? <sighs> what problem's that? The car. Mm. Yeah, I did what you said. And? It seemed to do the trick. Not to be said for experience. Whoops, I think I finished my find. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. 
You know, I thought my life in that shop was all right until this opportunity came up, and then it was like suddenly I realised I was just waiting to escape. Did you? It's like my whole life had been measured in deliveries of baked beans. <laughs> I hate baked beans. And it's all down to you. You're the best friend a girl could ever have. You know, you make working in that shop sound like a prison sentence. Well, I won't pretend I'll be sad to leave this place, but uh, I was happy when I started out, and I'm sure you can be too. Really? Yes. You're the centre of village life here. Everything revolves around you. Everybody needs you. Yeah, but they're baked beans and they're stamps. Oh, I'm sure you'll get used to it. It's a matter of getting into the rhythm. Rhythm? Yeah. The rhythm of life in a village shop, getting up in the morning, staying on top of the orders, being bright and cheerful. Yeah, with some old misery who comes in for a paper and a cat food. What about my deli counter? Honestly, pie in the sky, love. The sooner you let that little dream go, the happier you will be. It's a steady living. Well, fairly steady anyway, but there's no room for creativity. Not like in the B&B. &B. Now, when's your Gordon's money coming through? Money? Yeah, he's not mucking you about, is he? Oh, no. No, no, he's not, no. So? Don't tease me. It's come through. Has it? Oh, great! Oh, Carol, that's fantastic! Now, all we've got to do is set a completion date. How about Friday? Sorry? For the completion date. I've got to go. Where? Terry, I'm meeting Terry. Wait a minute. Wait, we've got business to discuss. Uh, sorry, darling, can't stop. We'll talk about it later, I promise. Bye. Perhaps I ought to say something. Why should you? It's not your fault your father's a thug. Maybe I should. Ladies, leave this to me. I'll need a bottle of his favourite single malt and three glasses. Good evening. Good evening. Can I help you? Yes, I hope so. Um, I'm interested in the bed and breakfast in Emmerdale. I'm afraid an offer's already been accepted on that property. We do have something similar in Robblesfield. No. No, that's the one I want. Well, if you want to leave your telephone number, I can let you know if the deal falls through. I believe the buyer has offered considerably less than the asking price. The offer has been accepted. I really don't think I can help you. I'll offer the full 175000 in cash. No chain, no delay. I'll call him straight away. <laughs> You know, he just swans in like he already owns it and says he's planning to buy it. Mm. Got no heart, that man. No. Shoot me down, I don't know the history, but if this Jack Sugden is willing to sell it, maybe Chris's money is as good as anybody else's. Excuse me. Mind if I join you? Ah, the man with the lethal right hook. Yeah, please sit down. Rod Blackstock. I just wanted to apologise for last night. Not for hitting the bloke, he had that coming, but for... Doing in the middle of your meeting, that was very rude of me. Will you have a drink with me? That's good stuff. Oh, your favourite, so I'm told. You have excellent taste. Do I detect flattery? I don't do flattery. On the other hand, we both know that I want to smooth over what happened last night, so we may as well enjoy it. Mrs Tate, is it? Not quite, no. Charity. Chris is right and woman. He's a lucky man. Now, if you like this, I know one you should try. It's fiery like this, but with a hint of honey at the finish. It's from one of the smaller islands. Oh, yeah. It's hard to come by, but I could find you a case. Yeah, I deal in wines and spirits. I sell through a chain of warehouses. Sounds all right. Oh, that's hard work. I have to taste the new Shiraz from South Africa, make sure that the Sauvignon from Marlborough is up to scratch, and then I'm off to some distillery in Oban to uh, try some more of these. Oh, tough job, but someone's got to do it. Exactly. <laughs> and that's full-time, is it? Apart from when you're beating up my employees. I have uh, one or two other businesses on the go. I've never been satisfied with one job. Ring any bells, Chris? Maybe. Chris runs a haulage yard, a computer firm. 
Oh, understood, Farm. <laughs> now that's what I call diversification. I used to have a share in a racehorse once. Gorgeous animal. Zesty Zoe, she was called. <laughs> <laughs> I say something funny? I was just trying to imagine telling my sister about it. Well, I look forward to the opportunity. I'll leave you to it. No, no, don't go. I want to hear more about this malt you're going to find me. Medieval candle, Elizabethan pot puree, Victorian doily and a 70s lava lamp. I withdraw all my reservations on the interior design front. Your mother's got natural talent. Elizabethan pot puree. Yeah, it's a pewter dish, look. Authentic, oldie English. It's aluminium and it's made in Shanghai. Bob Champers, this is no time to be distracted by details. This is time to look at the grand sweep of the future for the hopes. You what? She said the grand sweep of the future, Donna. She was being poetic. I am, aren't I? Oh, come on, Donna. This is really worth getting excited for. After all this time, it's finally happening. A whole new beginning for us. Carol says the money's come through, so there's nothing standing in our way now. To the future. Wait, wait. To the future and to Carol, a real friend who's opened the door to our new life. Well, Mrs. Waring, he really was quite hard to get hold of. What did he say? He said he felt it was unethical to accept a higher offer at this late stage. But because the other buyers kept him waiting so long and you are prepared to offer such a quick deal, he feels justified in this case in accepting your offer. He's accepting it. I think we can safely say the bed and breakfast is yours, Mrs. Waring. 